Okay, I've got my pot of coffee ready to go. Keep me uh, functional. Cup of coffee ready to go. Keep me functional. And uh, apologize for the little bit of shakiness there, holding it with my bad hand. Um, I'm going to see if I can tap into those same muscles and skills that can help me keep my dishes done to make some soap. Let's see how this is going to go. I have to be careful because I am working with lye and I am having some dropsy issues with my both hands actually, my right and left hand. But I have found that, um, you know, trading hands and taking breaks and if I focus really hard while I'm holding things, I don't drop them as much. I tend to be more dropsy when I'm not paying as close attention. I think most people are anyways. I just happen to be a little bit more klutzy um, unless I'm really focusing. So anyways, I'm going to give it a shot and uh, try to bring you all along with me. I may have to take more breaks than I normally do, so there'll probably be a lot of cuts in this video. And uh, we'll get going. Okay, to start with, I'm going to set my cup. This is a cup I use only for lye, lye only. Um, I never use it for anything, for food or anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on so that I can set the tear on it. I already have it set up for ounces. And this is the sodium hydroxide. So I need 11.8 ounces. Always mix your lye. See it's already starting to clump a little bit. That's because this bottle has been used for a few batches and so it's got some clumping going on because it once it's opened it'll attract moisture and it'll actually make it inert. So I'm going to pay attention here so I get the right amount. I need 11.8 ounces. I know this part's riveting, isn't it? Oh, there we go. Perfect. I still have a little bit of clumpy stuff in there. Down at the bottom, you can kind of see those parts of it probably aren't much good anymore anyways. And since I'm at the end of the bottle, I will probably just have this disposed of appropriately. I could even pour it down a uh, clogged drain if I so choose, seeing as how it is lye, which is basically a drain cleaner. Um, so anyways, that is the, the lye itself. And then... I am going to measure out. I'm going to have to re-tear this because this container is much bigger than the other one. So it's showing that it already weighs 5.65 ounces and that's above and beyond what the other one weighed. So I'm going to re-tear this. And basically the way I re-tear it is just by pushing this button here that's the tear while the container is on it. So that's going to zero it out. And then I have distilled water here that I only use for um, making soaps so I always have to mark them as soap because otherwise people that come over will drink it <laughs> as you know it is just distilled water so here I'm going to need 29.5 ounces of distilled water oh I went way over I wasn't paying any attention at all. So I'm going to have to go pour some of this off to get down to the weight that I need. And now it is perfectly at 29.5. And I'm going to show you just how funny my little phone setup is here. Okay, there's my 29.5. What I am using is in my medicine or my uh, spice cabinet here, which is a mess. We're not going to talk about that. Um, I have two wood skewers, and I'm using those to very carefully balance my phone. 
That's some craziness right there. Just thought I'd share that with you. So now I'm going to start getting the oils together and I'm going to stop the video for a minute so I can rearrange my little pokey sticks and bones so you can see that. And now once again I'm using a much larger container so again I'm going to have to tear this and um, by pressing the tear button on the scale and now I'm going to be putting the oils. I'm doing each of the items, weighing them out separately in separate containers because I'm going to need to take a break from this. My hands are starting to cramp up on me. So uh, as long as I have everything measured separately, um, putting the stuff together will be much easier because it's a different, uh, a different motion basically with my hands. So what I'm going to need now is my coconut oil and my olive oil. So let me get that part started. And again, once I've started using something for my soaps, I always mark them that they are for soap only so that nobody uses them for food. Um, not that I've even necessarily contaminated anything, um, but I don't want to take a chance because I am working with lye and around lye, and if it happens to be a little bit in the air or something, I just don't want to take a chance on contaminating anything. So that's kind of where I am with this. And I have multiples of these. I get them at Sam's Club. Um, they're stainless steel, so I have some that I can use for lye and some that I can use for oil. And so right now I'm going to work on getting the coconut oil in here. And I need 29 ounces. And this one was being used for cooking before. That's why some of it's already gone. But I know I have enough in here for soap, so after I get done taking what I need today, I will mark this container for soap only. And I'll keep, I actually keep it in a completely separate location as well. So that I don't ever have to worry about it accidentally getting into the food that we're eating around here. So... This is going to take me just a second. I'm sure this is just absolutely thrilling. So let me get this part done for a second. Okay, so I have all the coconut oil out that I need. And it is pretty hard right now because it's been down in my cupboard uh, where I keep all my pantry items and that stays very cool. So uh, I'll have to let it warm up a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is mark this one. There's still quite a bit of the oil left in there, but I want to make sure that this doesn't get used for anything other than um, soap making because it is now, at least in my mind, been contaminated because I've been having it open around, uh, you know, things that have come in contact with lye. So uh, I'm going to get my olive oil ready and start pouring that in here too. Okay, so I have the olive oil ready to go, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the tear on that again. That was 29 ounces of the coconut oil, and now I want 51 ounces of the olive oil. So I'll go ahead and pour that in here. I'm going to watch the scale this time, because it's pretty hard to take it out once you get it in there for this stuff. So we're going to 51 ounces. Oops, I went over by just a little tiny bit, but that's okay. It's not, uh, not going to be the end of the world. I try to keep as close as I can, and it's not by much, so uh, we, should be, we should be good to go here. Actually, I could probably take out what I over poured and use that to somewhat hydrate the lavender that I crushed up in my mortar and pestle earlier. And so what I've done is here, I took my, my lavender. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, my goodness. Um, my, I took the lavender buds, and I crushed it up in the mortar and pestle so that, uh, one, it releases that wonderful lavender smell, and, two, it makes it so that it doesn't look like little rat poops in the <laughs> soap. 
anyway, uh, what I'll do is I'll take the um, the oil that I over poured and I'll pour it into here so that it starts to um, kind of infuse with the oil and it'll help bring out the fragrance and make it easier to go into the soap and kind of soften it up a little bit. So basically when I over poured the oil into the uh, bucket below, it was not quite two tablespoons more than what I needed by weight. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that in with my lavender and kind of soften up that lavender for a little bit while I'm letting this, these oils warm up to room temperature and uh, take a little break for a bit. So because this was so cold, the uh, olive oil, or not the olive oil, but the coconut oil was so cold, I've decided to put it into a sink full of hot tap water to kind of help it along a little bit. I usually try to do both the oil and uh, lye at about 100 degrees, give or take 20 degrees on either one. I don't want them their difference in temperature more than 20 degrees off, but um, this will help kind of warm it up a little quicker and, and soften it up. And uh, if for some reason I couldn't get it softened up in the time frame that I was looking at, I could always pour the lye in a little hot and that would definitely bring it together, but I think sometimes that takes a little bit more chances as far as consistency of the soap afterwards. So we'll let it warm up and take a break for a little while. Okay, so now I'm going to start putting the lye into the water while that oil is almost ready where I want it. And uh, again, these containers, anything that I use, I mark for what it is. Um, I tend to use a lot of other kinds of containers that I get that are leftovers from, you know, produce or cottage cheese or whatever like this thing. I actually was getting kind of anxious for that coconut oil to uh, melt, so I actually put some coconut oil in here and, and helped it along just a little bit. In the microwave. You can also do uh, like I've been doing with the hot water in the sink. It's almost there now and uh, so I'll go ahead and get the lye going and by the time the lye is ready that should also be ready. And I have found it is absolutely best to use the um, stainless steel spoons when you're working with the lye. Wooden ones will work for a couple of batches but it'll actually eat up the spoon and then you wind up with splinters in your soap. So always add the lye crystals to the water, not the other way around. The lye will heat up so fast that um, it can actually cause a, an explosion of some kind. I've never tested it. I'm not going to test it. So I just know this is the way that it's recommended to do it because of that factor. So that's how I do it. And I'll go ahead and start pouring it. And one of the things I do, it's going to get loud. I'm going to turn on my fan because I am doing this inside. I have the windows open and I'm turning the stove fan on. That's why I'm doing it on the stove. coming off of there. It's going up into the fan. But using this stove fan, I actually, I don't smell any of it. It doesn't allow it to escape into the, the house at all. So it really does work. I'm going to go ahead and stir this up a little bit more. I want to make sure all of the uh, lye crystals are dissolved. And then I'll let it set for a second. And let me show you this crazy thing I had going on here for how to hold my phone. I was using the top of one of my incense burners and a, and a cup <laughs> as a brace to hold it, but you can see right now it's kind of milky in there, and uh, I'm going to come back to it when it's no longer milky. Now most of the fumes are gone right now, so I went ahead and turned off the fan so you don't have to hear me over the fan, and I just want to show you Sorry, I'm getting a little shaky here. I'm going to have to take a break while this cools down. But um, 
I want to show you right now the temperature of this thermometer is at about 80 degrees. I'm going to put it in there right now and show you just how hot this will get. I can feel the heat coming up off of it. So you can just see that needle climbing. The back of my hand is already getting pretty hot just being close down to it. So you can see it's it's pretty hot. So I'm going to turn the fan on to make sure it doesn't get any fumes in here. And um, I'll come back to this in just a little bit. One of the other notables, I have some distilled white vinegar here. And um, that uh, is so that if I have any kind of spills or splashes, I can rinse with it. I also have a piece of a lime. This was actually something that was used yesterday, but I know I was making soap today, so I saved it because if you get a little bit on your hand or something like that, just rub a little piece of lime on it. And because it's an acid and the lye is an alkaline, what it'll do is counteract the effect. So even just a little you know, piece of lime left over is, is fine for just a small splash. If you like spill it, you want to have some distilled vinegar on hand and uh, ready to completely rinse and wash the area. So here you can see all of the uh, coconut oil has finally dissolved. Uh, the water temperature here is about 100 degrees. And let's see, where is our temperature for the oil? definitely not as hot as that lye was earlier, so it's uh, not moving as fast. But you want to leave it in long enough to really gauge the true temperature of it. And we're looking like we're right at about 100 degrees, and that's, that's really exactly where we want it. So the oil is definitely ready. So let's take a look at where I'm going to wipe this off. Excuse me while I do that. <laughs> Alright, so I've got the lye sitting in ice right now so that it will cool off a little faster. And because I want to get a true measurement, I'm going to go ahead and drop that temperature down because I know that ice water's colder than the lye. Dry it off a little bit. And you can see that the water, the lye water has uh, gotten uncloudy. You can see some ice cubes sitting down there at the bottom. And that stuff sitting on top there, I will probably strain this when I pour it into the oil because I have a feeling that my lye bucket is starting to break down a little bit. And that may be because I use it all the time for making soap and it's had it's enough. I'm probably going to invest in a nice stainless steel container to do my lye. Maybe get a little stainless steel pitcher or something like that. And uh, that'll probably be much better. So we're looking like uh, about 140. It's still climbing. So it's still really hot. At its peak, it was probably pushing 180. Um, so we're going to, I think that the if I keep that warm water in the um, oil, it'll be fine. And uh, it'll stay at temperature and it's not going to go bad or anything like that. So I'll just let that sit there for a little bit and um, come back to this when the lye is closer to the temperature. And since both my oil and lye are the same temperature now, I'm going to use this is basically one of those little drain things. You get them at the dollar store to put in your sink so that it catches any kind of food waste or whatever. And... Uh, I bought a, it comes with another size that I actually have in my bathtub, but um, it works perfectly for straining out any kind of randomness that might be in uh, your lye. Like I said, I had the one time where the spoon kind of dissolved in there. Uh, lye itself kind of leaves a residue anyway, so it's always good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the lye water through this strainer, and you notice I have gloves on. I'm not going to risk getting this on my skin. And I'm going to just pour this right in to my oils. And then I'll stir it up by hand with the uh, metal spoon for a little bit. And then I'll switch over to the hand mixer to the uh, stick blender. Just want to get it all in there. And that caught some of the goo. So what I'm going to do is just drop that right in there. That keeps that out of the mix. 
And let's show you here. You can see the oil on top. It's already starting to emulsify. Um, the, uh, the oils are starting to emulsify at the bottom there. So I'm going to go ahead and start stirring this up a little bit. And you'll see it'll get a nice kind of milky color. And then I'll get my stick blender going in here and show you how that looks. Just want to be careful you don't splash up. You should wear goggles and all that good stuff while you're doing this. Um, don't wear anything nice that you don't want to get ruined. Try not to drop your phone in the lye and oil mix. That's probably not too good. So I'm going to go ahead and get my stick blender going here because it's a little easier to manage. It'll make a little more noise. And you don't need a stick blender. You could do it just with a spoon, just stirring. It just takes longer, that's all. Now again, for this stick blender, I only use this for um, doing soaps. I don't use it for food. This is one that I've had forever and ever, and I wasn't really using it for food, so I decided to go ahead and uh, just confiscate it for my, my soaps, and I absolutely love it. I do have another cheapy one that if I ever need to either use it for soaps or for... Um, for anything for that matter. I have another one that I always could use. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out of here and I'm going to go ahead and just put that into my little lye container here. Try to keep everything together. So this will make a little bit of sound but I want to show you what it looks like as it's coming together. <laughs> So I'll just kind of let that sit for a second. And basically what I'm working on here is trying to get it from this completely liquid stage um, to what they call trace, which is when you pull up your spoon or whatever you're using, it would actually leave a little line, almost like a really runny pudding um, is kind of the best way I can explain it. But I'm going to wait till it gets a little closer to trace before I add some of my other ingredients like the lavender I have soaking and the essential oils because I don't want them to just burn up while it's still really heavy lye at this stage. So um, I'll come back to this in just a few moments. And one of the things I've never really worked with before is pigment powders or any of the um, uh, what you call them? The micas. So I have a bunch of different things that I got uh, here not too long ago that I'm going to go ahead and try. And since I'm making a lavender soap, I want to try putting just a little bit of lavender in here. I'm not sure how much is going to do what, so I'm going to start pretty small. Um, I'm guessing that's about a quarter teaspoon. And we'll see what that does to the color. I hear purple is a really tough one because it can actually make it turn kind of a pukey gray, but let's see what happens. <laughs> I think we're already getting almost a trace here. Um, and that's the other thing, is adding things to your soap can sometimes make it go to trace faster or make it lose trace. So um, we'll see, that definitely didn't do much. So I'm going to try adding a little more and see what I can do. Here. So I added about a teaspoon more. I'm not sure. I might have to read into more about the adding the colorants to see if maybe I did this wrong, but that is a kind of a nice lavender color. I am definitely a trace. You can kind of see how it's, it's, this is what the, you would call a really light trace. Um, 
it doesn't leave like a, a big thing sticking up, but you can kind of see that trace of where I was. You can see I'm leaving marks in the surface. So that's where I want it to be when I add my essential oil, so I'm going to get that going here. So here I've added the lavender that I had soaking in the oil that I had crushed with my mortar and pestle. Oh, it smells wonderful. <laughs> Besides adding a little bit of fragrance, which won't really, you know, be much relative to the... Oh, it does smell so good. Um, basically, it's going to add a little bit of texture to the soap, so that it'll be kind of like a body scrub at the same time. And I am using some lavender essential oil, and I know that this is a two-ounce bottle here. So I'm going to go ahead and pour some of that in. I'm not going to pour the whole amount in until I know for sure how it's going to smell. Um, and I also have a little bit of lemongrass and a pipette there. I'm not going to add a lot of that, just a little. Oh, that smells fabulous. Oh, that smells so wonderful. So, let me add just a little bit of the lemongrass. I don't want too much because I don't want it to overwhelm the lavender. I just want it to add to it. So this is a three milliliter uh, pipette. And I'll just squirt a little of that in there. And uh, I kind of do it the way I bake. It's kind of by guess and by golly. I add until I get to where I want it to be. And uh, so I'm just going to keep playing with it for a minute until I get it exactly where I want and then I'll pour it into my molds. And this is what you would call a pretty heavy trace. You can see how it's really leaving marks. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into the molds now. And for my molds, basically what I use, I use a lot of anything I can find. These are just some little organizer trays that I found at the dollar store. And I'm going to dry this out real quick. They work really good because they release it. They're just kind of a hard plastic. Um, I have them in different sizes. And they make nice little bars. So I'm going to get that ready and... Come right back. Okay, so here I have just a little bit of Midas Touch. It's a gold flick uh, mica, and I'm just going to take a little tiny pinch, and I'm just going to sprinkle it all. Oh, just make some little sprinklies over the top of that. See how that works. Oh, how pretty. And these are going to be ready for Mother's Day, so I have some stuff to give as presents. If anybody wants to contact me for a bar or two of this for your mom, you can just contact me through my Facebook page at this point, or uh, I think I have my contact information on my YouTube account, but if not, go to Facebook and look up Bohemian Tiger. 
and you will find me at my um, picture at the top is not soap. It's actually looks like a shed, but it's actually a cabin that I'm building. So you can check me out there and contact me through there if you need to, if you'd like to have a bar of soap. I don't have anything like official going at this point, but I, I do do occasional pop-ups that you could come to if you're living in the Denver area, Denver, Colorado. And uh, anyway, so that's my soap. I'll show you how it looks when I cut it. So before, before I can cut it, I have to um, let it cure for 24 hours. So I'm just using some old containers here. That's, I don't know, some salad from some store and a yogurt container here. And then I have, uh, it's an old laundry lid. Because you can see how this one especially kind of peeks up over the edge of the container. I don't want to take a chance on setting something on top of that because then it'll cause a problem. So I'm just going to cover it like that so that it's protected. And then I'm going to cover it up with some towels and a blanket. And that's basically going to be a way to keep it warm. So I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. So that's it. I'm just going to leave it there for 24 hours and it'll keep it warm, which will uh, make it uh, cure just a little bit faster. And you want to make sure that you don't leave it anywhere that anybody's going to mess with it, a dog, a cat, a kid, or anything like that. So basically what I do is I have, I have a spare room here that I keep random things that I have just kind of, you know, that's where I keep all my soap stuff and containers and paintings. I don't know what to do with blah, blah, blah. My yoga mat, of course. So, anyways, it'll stay there till tomorrow. Okay, so it's been sitting for 24 hours. It's completely gelled. And uh, I'm just starting to cut it. I cut the ends off first because they're not quite as refined as the center. But that gold fleck on top really looks kind of pretty. And uh, now I'm just cutting here, so back to uh, my little sticks for my phone. Let's see if we can get this lined up here. And I have one of the little cutters. It's just a regular dough cutter. It has the little measurements on there, so you can kind of get a rough idea. I've already marked more or less where I want to cut it. So... I probably should make myself one of those nifty little rigs for cutting. Um, I see them all the time at the, the different soap supply stores, but they're so dang expensive. And I keep thinking, well, maybe after I get my shoulder surgery, I'll just make myself one. Because um, then I'll have full use of my my right arm again. I could totally just take a couple of pieces of scrap wood I probably have laying around and uh, put together something. I was even thinking I could I probably have some guitar strings around here I could use as the wire to cut with or I could even just make a channel to set the soap in that has little blade channels already marked out for the the width of the bars and even just use this. I've got another one similar to this that I could use too. That uh, I could, you know, as long as I have something to follow as kind of a track for the blade so that I cut square, because my cuts are always just a little bit off. That's why I just sell them by the by the weight rather than the bar just because sometimes they're going to be different and you can kind of see those little flicks of the um, ground up lavender that I have in there and they'll get a little little hard over time but see I kind of cut that at a wonky angle there it's narrower up at this end than it is at this end but that's okay and these things will dramatically change in weight as they cure. Uh, the water content will kind of evaporate out and they'll get a lot lighter. So some of these that are probably right now, I'm guessing this one probably weighs 
oh gosh, upwards of upwards of five ounces, I'm gonna guess. And after it's all done, it'll probably be closer to four ounces. But let's just see how much is this. Oh, boy, I'm good. 5.1 ounces. So, by the time it's all done curing and stuff, it'll be at about 4 ounces. 3.5 to 4 ounces.